you make it back to to Boston, uh, which is where uh, you're both. That's like the the closest major city. Uh, you get back to to Boston, and uh, word has reached people in Boston of what happened in Gamwell. Um, maybe Phoebe even wrote up an article for uh, for the newspapers, for the press, on what happened. And when you arrive in Boston, when your your bus or your train gets there, there's actually quite a few people uh, waiting there to to see you. Um, one of them is a is a professor named Percival. He says, uh, "Hello, hello. My name is Percival Clayton the Third. Oh, it's very nice to meet you. I'm a professor at uh, nearby Boston University, and it's my pleasure to make your acquaintance. And uh, I just want to say that was uh, very interesting. Those things that you did. Ah. And he uh, um, kind of chubby, and his hair's a little bit greased back, and he's got uh, some glasses on. And, uh, perhaps, perhaps one of these these days, I could." Uh, over tea, we could discuss the, the things that you found. I, I would be very much interested. And just then, a, a man kind of pushes through and and says, "Yes, yeah, my name's Mr. Knott. I uh, I need people just like you. I, I've heard what you did for the good folks up in Gamwell, and and I, I need your help. Um, I, I need you to examine an old house in Central Boston, known as the Corbett House. Remember, you have your notepads if you want to write anything down. The Corbett House." The, uh, the former tenants, the Macario family, were involved in a tragedy, and the owner wishes to understand the mysterious happenings at the house and set matters straight. Mr. Knott, uh, no, I, I have been unable to rent the house out since the tragedy, and I hope that you can clear things up and restore its good name. I, uh, I can reimburse you for your time and trouble. Uh, here's the keys and the address, and uh, $25 cash in advance. Again, that's the, the Corbett house in Boston. The family that was just there, there was just a, a, tr a horrible tragedy, and uh, the person that owns it wants to know, uh, uh, wants to understand what happened there so that we can rent it out again because people are nervous. So we need people to go in and say, no, the house is, house is okay, and you just had a run in with a house that wasn't okay, and I just want you to, to check this one out since you're experienced. So I'll give you handout number one that kind of explains all that. And then I didn't read the bottom, but you can look at the stuff on the bottom. Okay. So, you have any questions for Mr. Knott? Um, it's in central Boston, you said? Uh, yes, yes, central Boston. And, uh, it's, why, well, it's only about a mile from here. I could, I could take you, uh, uh, hire a taxi and they could take you there right now if you like. Okay, and what are going to happen to the family? Oh, horrible, horrible business. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but the uh, the husband and wife are in the asylum. You know, for, for crazy people, and uh, well, it's just frightened uh, frightened up most of the neighborhood. And we're just hoping that maybe you guys can help us out. Okay. Um. Is, so, okay. I guess we should just go there. Can you write about money? <laughs> yeah. Evil house money. Sad story. <laughs> no, it's right. Well, why don't you look at at the handout? <laughs> Like the, that bottom paragraph that says, knowing... Um, knowing your jobs, you will want to conduct some research before you head to the house. You could check out the old newspaper articles at the office of the Boston Globe, uh, been to the Central Library, or go to the Hall of Records. The choice is yours. So that's just a reminder that before you just charge straight into this house, just like with the Gamwell house, <laughs> you kind of get some information about what's going on. I mean, it worked. <laughs> Well, you got some information first before you went in. Yeah. Um, so, so here the kids of Cthulhu find themselves at the beginning of another investigation. In order to get some information, they decide first to head down to the police station to see if they can find some sort of police report or other information about what may have happened at this property, uh, at this mansion that they have been sent to investigate. Uh, they reach the police station and talk to the person at the front desk, and it doesn't go particularly well, but they do get a lead to head down to the clerk's office and see if they have anything there. Uh, you head down to the to the clerk's office, and and you see uh, Kim DeBrun. She's a kind of an old old lady, sort of angry and snarly. What do you guys want? <laughs> um, I'd like to know information about the Corbett House. 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know who you are. Why don't you make a law roll? Oh, okay. Where's my law? Maybe you pull out your badge. Um, I have 45. <laughs> so. So, do you remember how to roll? Yeah. Yep. What, which dice? These two? Yep. Yep. And what do you want to get? Uh, anything below 45. Yeah, 45 or lower. 55. 55. Now, you could use 10 luck to make that a 45, or you can do what's called push the roll. So to push the roll, you get to re-roll. But then if you fail, something bad happens. Like, well, you get mad at me? <laughs> so that license expired. <laughs> Possibly. Um, so you want to push the roll, or is there another way you could maybe, like showing your badge didn't work. Is there anything else you could maybe do? Um, I could. Or pickle, you too. Um, I don't know. I could use luck, I guess. Well, you could use luck, you could push the roll, or you could try a different approach. Wait, wait, wait. So she's the what again? She's the clerk. Uh, so am I higher, like, rank than her in the, like, police society or whatever? Yeah, but this isn't the police. This is the, like, the courts. Oh, the court system. Yeah. Well, I could tell her, um, this information is urgent. Urgent. You would be interfering with the law. <laughs> I'm afraid, or I'm afraid you need a warrant if you're going to um, look at this information. Snap. Yeah. She's not very nice. Um, well, uh, don't you have to go to the court to get a warrant? Like the police? You're going to have to talk to a judge. Um. It's going to take you at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and get to and Mr. Knott uh, was hoping to get this house rented, like, within a week. Oh, boy. Um, hmm. <laughs> what do I do, then? Do you have any other skills? Or are you too, Phoebe? I guess I could just use luck. Well, hang on. Just... What are, like... What are some other ways that you could get what you want out of her? If showing your badge didn't work. I could sneak faster. <laughs> well, you could try to sneak. Charm. Maybe you can say, oh, oh your hair is that. so lovely. I didn't so, think about that. that Ooh, sure. Okay. I didn't think about I mean, that. Your sweater has a soup stain on it. I love that. Okay, so you're going to make a charm roll? Sure. Okay. What die strong? Wait. Uh, here, just use mine. Oh, I had them. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's a zero one. That's a critical success. Yes. So make sure you check the box. Oh, my dice betrayed me. <laughs> she says, oh, oh, thank you for noticing my soup stain. It, it's been in the family for generations. You, you are so precious. Why? <laughs> I'm not supposed to, but uh, let me let me pull up a file. <laughs> what? Let's chat and both adventures. <laughs> oh. She says, uh, Well, thanks to a critical success roll, the kids are now well on their way. They have learned through a police report from uh, about 15 years ago that there was a raid on a church called the Chapel of Contemplation. And in this raid, some terrible things happened. The report has been scrubbed and censored. Uh, I did that partly because this is a kid's game, and partly because uh, the information in the report would have been frightening enough that it actually caused one of the policemen to put his pistol in his mouth and commit suicide. And... Uh, so we just kind of left it at the imagination to decide what might have actually happened there. What the kids did find out was that when the police arrived, there were over 50 people in robes with cups with a, a dark red liquid that looked like it was possibly wine. There was a gunfight. There were several people killed. And then at one point, a lantern was knocked over and the church caught fire and burned down. But uh, the parts that were blacked out were left to the imagination. In the uncensored version of this document, you can read what they may have seen, and it is gruesome indeed. But we decided not to do that because this is Kids of Cthulhu. And my, my partner, uh, or, or the, the, this person's partner, it says uh, when, when he saw what was, what was happening... Uh, with these people, he actually put his gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. He, he, he couldn't take it. What he saw, I don't know what he saw, uh, but it says that apparently there was somebody was was well known and 
and uh, uh, one of the other officers took a lantern from the wall and somehow it ended up breaking and starting a fire and the whole chapel burned down but uh, mm. this this church was uh, was run by the pastor that uh, in fact he he was supposed to be uh, well w when mr. Corbett passed away he in his last will and testament he left everything he had to to this pastor in this chapel and uh, this is the, the police record we have of what happened to this this chapel of contemplation it was some nasty nasty business mm. um, I don't think it was wine in those cups that they were drinking it's probably blood Ugh, I don't even want to consider that he <laughs> said red wine right? well it, he said he, he thought it was wine but I don't know um, I don't know what a man would have to see to want to shoot himself do you know what they were like what they were worshiping or whatever uh, I don't know. I, I do know uh, also that the pastor was arrested and sentenced to 40 years in prison. Um, uh, at, but he, he escaped from prison five years later and fled the scene, and, and we've, or fled the state. We've never seen him hmm. since then. Hmm, well... Horrible, horrible business. I, I wish there was, there was more I, I could help you. Maybe, maybe if you head over to the, the Hall of Records, you could find that, uh, that will. So the kids do just that. They go to the Hall of Records and find the will, and in the will they read that Walter Corbett left all of his possessions to the Chapel of Contemplation and to the pastor therein, including his home. And most surprisingly to them, he also wished to be buried in the basement of that home. And that was something that definitely triggered them off as far as what might be causing the problems at the Corbett house. It's possible. I kind of want to go talk to Mr. Nod again. Make a psychology roll. Okay, where's that? There it is. Oh, I only have a one? Oh, wait, no, no. I have a 59. I looked at that other one. I don't know what that is. Please, 26. Go ahead and check the box. Yeah. So, meeting with Mr. Nott, you kind of think that, uh, gosh, if, if he were part of the cult, he probably wouldn't want us sniffing around in the basement. Unless he's, they need a human sacrifice and they're trying to get us in there. Maybe. And he's tricking us to get into the house so that they can trap us and use us as a human sacrifice. Uh, that could be possible. So I still want to go talk to Mr. Knott. Okay. Um, anywhere else you want to go? Any more research you want to do? Mm, to talk to Mr. Knott. Well, like, what did you think, Phoebe? Was there anything like using your skills? You've done the kind of the legal and law stuff. What what would you know? Like what co sort of contacts would you have? Like who would you talk to as a foreign correspondent? Maybe like um. Oops. What did it say in the first handout? It gave you some suggestions for where you could go. The Central Library. Yeah. Or the Boston Globe. Yeah. How about the Boston Globe? Cause... You want to go to the Boston Globe? Sure. Their investigations then took them to the Boston Globe, where they looked through news clippings, as well as to the local library, where they searched again for other items of interest, since the Boston Globe had had a fire which wiped out all their records prior to the mid to late 1870s. In the library, they met, why, that NPC again, Percival Clayton III, the wily young professor at Boston University who helped them in the library to receive information that they were struggling to get through poor library use roles. Once again, the NPC comes in to help them out. Sometimes they need a little push in the right direction. And now that they have all this information, they felt prepared to go into the house and find out exactly what was going on. Because of the police report, because of the newspaper clippings, because of the will, they fully expected to find a body in the the basement buried and they hoped to dig up the body and recover it. They were also worried that perhaps there were cult going-ons in the basement, perhaps rituals or some sort of, of evil worship there. They even suspected Mr. Knott of being a member of the Chapel of Contemplation and then they were reminded that the chapel had burnt down about 10 years before and if he was a member of the, the cult he probably wouldn't want them rooting around in the basement. So sometimes you have to get them back on track. But it's good that their imaginations are going all sorts of different directions, trying to piece together the mystery. Right, you produce the key, open the front door. The door squeaks. 
There's a long hallway before you. On the left hand side, there's three doors, and then you see a staircase leading up and down. On the right hand side, there's a door here, and then a door at the other end. And now they are in the Corbett house. They investigate thoroughly, downstairs, and then upstairs. For a moment, they wanted to go downstairs immediately after investigating the ground floor. But I didn't want them to get to the basement too soon, because there is, after all, a very unique encounter upstairs in one of the bedrooms. So I had them hear a noise upstairs, as though a window was opening, and perhaps a footstep or a floorboard was squeaking, thinking that perhaps there was someone up there. And so they went upstairs. And that's where they first came face to face with taking damage in Call of Cthulhu. You hear a, a rattling, scratching sound uh, near the window of this room. Oh, no. What do you do? Uh, like, I don't know. Just go look out the window. So you go over to the window? Is it open? Uh, no. But maybe it's something just outside the window. You, you can't, can't tell. It just sounds like there's something... I like a squirrel. <laughs> it's like a squirrel. Or like a... You gonna go look? Uh, yes. Percival, you first. No, don't let Percival go first. I like Percival. You want Percival to go look? <laughs> no, Phoebe, you go ahead. I'll, I'll guard the, the back, the door. No, I don't want Percival to die. I don't like him. <laughs> Alright, so uh, you you walk up to the to the window and as you're looking out make a spot hidden roll. Okay, where's my spot hidden? Okay, 70. Uh, 37, so that was a yes. good one. So do I get to check you, the book? Yeah. As you walk up to the window, you uh, just out of the corner of your eye you see the bed shake for just a second. Under the bed. And just as you turn, the entire bed swings and then flies right at you, right towards the window. And because you made that spot roll, you're going to get a chance to jump out of the way. So you need to make a dodge roll. <laughs> Good thing I didn't have personal go luck. Dodge, 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 dodge. It's a skill. Under D. D. Okay. I was looking at the top. There you go. 37. Make a dodge roll. Hundred? That's a hundred. Uh, That's like a failure. That's really bad. Ooh. So you you are frozen with fear and are not able to get out of the way. You need to make a sanity check. Uh, 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 eighty-five. So go ahead and roll. You need to roll. So you have eighty-five. I'm gonna roll higher than eighty-five. Sixty-three. So you lose one sanity point. Uh, Seeing the bed move and fly towards you, you need to make a sanity roll as well. And so does Percival. Yep, Percival. Okay, 53. Oh, Percival got an 88. Percival, did you make a 53? Yeah, yeah, 53. Percival failed. And Percival loses three sanity. Oh no! Percival! Oh, Percival, I like it. Well, I, I don't think I lose anything, so, I'm not sure. So you rolled below your sanity? Yes. Yes, then you don't lose, or you lose one, sorry. So I have at 64 now. So Percival failed his sanity roll, but he did, He lost less than five. If he loses five, he goes temporarily, or anyone loses five, they go temporarily insane. Oh, if you lose a fifth of your, of your sanity within one day, then you go indefinitely insane for a long time, my last months. But Percival, just because he failed his roll, but didn't lose five points, so he has like an outburst. He goes, ah, and he screams, and he drops his flashlight. Now he has to make a luck roll to see if he broke his flashlight. Please, Percival. Don't worry, I'll give him a biscuit if he survives. He said he wanted a biscuit. I like you, Percival. I failed my, my luck roll. So he drops his flashlight, and the bulb breaks. But you're being attacked by a bed. A, bed. <laughs> a, bed. <laughs> a floating bed. Uh, you're going to take some damage. Yeah. Well, at least if Percival doesn't die. Hey, I'm uh, so glad Percival didn't go check the window. Yeah. Hey, I like Percival. Right. He's awesome. You need to roll a six sided dice and add two to it. You okay. want to roll low. 
one. A one. So you take three, three hit points worth of damage. Okay. So what's your hit points? Is twelve. Where is that? Below the picture. Yeah. So right at nine. Where's his current hit points? If you had lost six hit points, you would have had a major wound, like a broken arm. So, <laughs> so you're lucky, because you could have lost a lot there. Um, and the damage comes from the bed hitting you, plus you hit the window and the glass breaks, and it slices your arm. So you have a big cut. Hmm. And then as quickly as it happened, the bed lies still again. But you think you hear, ha, 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 ha. Oh, no. Laughter. From where? <laughs> you can't tell. It just seems to be all around you, in the walls, Wait. in the floors, in the ceiling. What if it was December 25th and it was ho, 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 ho. That'd be Java. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, what's going on? Well, I'm going to start, like, I'm going to see if Percival's okay. <gasps> oh, yes, yes. I, I'm fine. Thank you for checking on me, even though you're bleeding. <laughs> I just need a, I need a moment to compose myself. Oh, yes. It's okay, Percival. You'll be okay. <laughs> Thank you. And he's mopping his face with a handkerchief. <laughs> he's very frightened. He picks up his flashlight. Oh, dear. This is not good. And Phoebe's like dying. And I'm like checking on Percival. <laughs> and then seeing your bloody hands, you his handkerchief. Here, please staunch your wounds with that. <laughs> so you all like covered in sweat and tears. Mm -hmm. He probably blew his nose in it. <laughs> Ah, uh, keep it. It's done its three weeks. <laughs> All right. And now it came time to go downstairs. And once they were downstairs, it took a slight bit of prodding on my part to get them to try and take down the wall that uh, separates the basement from where Mr. Corbett is residing. And once they began to do that is when I had the knife appear. And thankfully I had... Percival as an NPC there. One, to be an extra target for the knife, but also uh, to be a sink of hit points in case there was going to be some damage, he could take the damage. As we shall see when they end up fighting Mr. Corbett, I had him be dominated. That just meant that he was out of the fight, letting the other two shine rather than having one of them be dominated. And the fight was rather tough. In fact, it came down to one lucky shot from a pistol by Jerry who took out Mr. Corbett. Had Mr. Corbett attacked again and hit with his knife, Jerry likely would have died. You see the shriveled old man look at the knife and he points at the knife and then flicks his finger towards you and the knife is going to dart at you. So you, you can make a dodge roll. Yeah. So it's a, got a success. Okay, where's my dodge? It's 37. 77. The knife gashes into you for four points of damage. What are your hit points? There's nine, so I'm at five. Five. All right, it's your turn. Um, I'll just shoot him again with my pistol this time. Pistol or your shotgun? My pistol. Okay, so draw your pistol. Mm -hmm. Now with your pistol, you can shoot one shot or up to three shots. With one shot, you kind of take an aim. With the three, you'll have a penalty die, so it's a little harder to hit, but you could hit with all three shots. I'll just hit him with the one. With one shot? Okay. Go ahead and make the roll. Let's see, what's you, my... You got a regular success. I also did get a regular success. So the tie goes to you. So you are... Because uh, he was trying to fight back. So what's the damage for your pistol? Um, 1d10 plus 2. Let's roll a 10-sided die and add 2. Uh, I don't. Wait. Okay. You should have a 10-sided die out there. We've Do been, I? We've been rolling them for percents. Oh, that's a 10-sided die. <laughs> okay. So and then plus 2. So this is a 10-sided? Yes. Okay. A 4. So then plus 2. So 6 points of damage. Yeah. Okay, he actually takes a, a pretty good blast from that. Um, you shoot him like right in the chest and it blows a chunk of dried flesh and bone out of him and just <laughs> kind of chuckles, but you can tell that, that that probably hurt him quite a bit. All right, Phoebe, what are you going to do? Well, um, I don't have the knife. 
Okay. The knife's kind of right in front of you if you want to try and grab it. Okay, then I guess I'll do it. Grab that. the knife. Sure. Go ahead and make a grab. Ooh, the knife uh, failed, so this this could be good. Where's the chest? Where's the other ten-sided? It's right there. It's right there. They're both right there. Ooh, five. five. Is that a hard success or yeah. an extreme success? It's an extreme. extreme. No, what's... It's an extreme. Yeah, so that's an extreme success. Okay. So you are able to grab it, and uh, you've got good control of, of the knife now. So... Uh, We'll go to Percival's turn. He's dazed. He's dazed, but he he responds to commands and he turns and holds both hands out towards Phoebe and starts walking towards you. Why is it always me? And maybe next round he'll be right there to attack you. He's moving kind of slowly, probably because he hurt his knee sliding down the stairs. <laughs> All right, the uh, the guy looks at you, seeing you holding the knife, and kind of growls. He's going to try and, f and get the knife to force out of your hand. So he points to the knife and snaps his fingers, and the knife starts to shake in your hands. you got to make a strength roll. Okay. i got a regular success. If you can get a 32 or lower would be awesome. Oh, that's a that's 100. That's a fumble. <laughs> so, um, I fail. You want to push that roll? You, you should probably push it. Okay, I guess I'll push it. A 12. So that is a hard success, right? Uh, with your strength? Yeah, it's a hard or a, an extreme with your strength. That's an extreme success, isn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah. It's 13. So uh, because you pushed the roll, you know that this is like he can only probably take one more hit before he's dead. That you pull, draw upon all your strength. And Ah, hang on to the knife so he can't wrest it out of your hands. <coughs> Jerry, what are you I'll doing? I'll shoot him again. This time, can I do two shots instead of just... Like, you can do three if you want. Can I do two? It's be the same penalty. You might as well do three. Okay. Give yourself an extra, extra chance. So, here's what you're going to do with the penalty dice. So, you're going to take um, one of Phoebe's ten-sided dice. That one. And you're going to roll all three of those. And you're going to use the highest... Of the of the tens, so like for an example, go ahead and roll. This one won't count. So that's either a sixty-eight or a thirty-eight. So you would use the sixty-eight in that case. Why? Because you get a penalty because you're taking three shots. So then you're going to roll that three times. Oh. Okay. So now this will be for your first shot. I'll take that. I got a fifty-three. Yep. Yeah, so fifty-three is that a success with your? Uh yeah. It is. You have seventy. Uh yeah. Okay. So, so that's one hit. So now roll them again. That's it's a 70. 70 or a 90. So that's a 90. Can I take the 70? No, you have to take the highest one. So the second shot misses. Oh. So now do the third shot. Uh, dang it. That's a, a 99. <laughs> but one of them hits. So uh, let me see if he dodges. He does not. So roll the damage. Uh, ten sided. Plus two. A nine plus two. Is that 11? Yeah. You shoot him right in the head, and he's, you see the hole right in his skull, and smoke kind of curls out of it, and he falls backwards, hits the ground, lifeless. And the knife in your hand immediately goes slack and clatters to the floor. And Percival? And Percival, oh, oh, what happened? He's like reaching out to strangle you, and he stops, oh, and kind of touches your face. What happened? Oh, what was I about to do? I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, I, I need a cookie. Okay. And I have... thus ends Walter Corbett. Um, we can go tell Mr. Knott. <laughs> uh, Mr. Knott is more than happy to receive the information uh, that you have. Uh, do you... Do you... What do you do? Do you tell him what you found? I'll tell him the whole thing. Uh, well... He is, uh... He's happy to find out that the, the problem is over. He's a little bit disturbed to find out that there was a dead body in the basement for a good 60 years or so, and <laughs> potentially corrupting and maybe even killing people. But he is super happy that uh, this long nightmare is over. And now he can finally get that house rented again and get some money. All right. Well, did you guys have fun? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to roll up to see our 
development, any bonuses we get, and that was fun. Another Kids of Cthulhu. Say bye. Bye. bye.